Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Casual Conversations on Columbia Surgery page. I am Brennan DeBose, the social media producer for Columbia Surgery, and today I have an amazing guest. His name is Dr. William Middlesworth. How are you doing today, sir? Great. Thanks, Brennan. Thank you so much for being here. We're very happy to have you. We know that you have a very busy schedule, so thank you for taking the time to speak with me today. Sure. Um, so I just want to dive right in on my first question, Dr. Middlesworth. What first interested you in becoming a doctor? It's a great question. I think uh, I, when I was young, I wanted to be a veterinarian. Uh, that was my first, uh, my first sort of professional ambition. And then as I got into college and a little bit beyond, uh, refocused more on, on human medicine. And because some of my early experiences were at a children's hospital, I think that influenced me into lean towards a pediatric subspecialty. And then uh, I just really identified with one of my medical school mentors who I thought was a wonderful combination of knowledge and the ability to apply that knowledge uh, and just a compassion for people and uh, the ability to have an immediate effect on people's lives in a very profound way that I think you know all appealed to me and made me want to be like that. Veterinarian. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I have a dog, so he's, he's, you know, I can't send it to you. Okay. Um, so my second question for you is, what is your specific practice, and why did you choose it? So I'm a general pediatric surgeon, and uh, some people say that we, uh, we're not organ space, organ system based like a lot of adult general surgeons. So rather than specialize in colorectal surgery or lung surgery, we really specialize in taking care of surgical problems for children, uh, so more of a, a period of life um, than uh, organ system spe specific specialty. And the thing that we do that nobody else does is probably newborn surgery. And as we get, uh, as our patients get older and we cover up to young adults, really up to 18 or 21, um, then we overlap significantly with uh, adult general surgeons, uh, but are probably more broadly focused than uh, any comparable adult general surgeon. Mm, interesting. Um, over the course of the career, your, your career, you've done so many amazing things. Um, and specifically, I want to know, when we're talking about childhood cancer, and we're talking about um, specifically um, cancer that kind of permeates through, um, I guess, the ages between 13 and 18, like the, those specific teenage years that sometimes get overlooked, um, what have you seen um, evolve uh, over the, the course of your career, and what do you hope that, uh, to see that will evolve even more? Sure. So in, in general terms, you know, some of the, we've had some amazing success in treating some of the most common types of childhood solid tumors. So for example, uh, Wilms tumor, a tumor of the kidney that um, arises in a younger age than, mm -hmm. than you referenced, but is sort of one of our success stories was a big lesson from that is that we learned that multimodal therapy, so using chemotherapy and radiation mm -hmm. therapy and surgery together, was really synergistic and got us higher cure rates than uh, did any of those uh, s those treatment modalities uh, on their own. So I think that was a big paradigm shift in, uh, in the way we think about treating cancer. I think people thought about curing cancer surgically, um, like we did with you know our initial approach to breast cancer, for example, mm -hmm. or people thought about curing cancer with chemotherapy or radiation. And I think that. Wilms tumor was really a nice paradigm of how all three of those modalities together achieve higher cure rates and maybe lower toxicities than either would alone if you applied only that one tool, uh, which sort of, you know, when you say it, kind of makes sense, right? If you have a lot of different approaches towards something, um, the chances of all of them together being successful maybe are a little higher. So that's one big sort of shift is that we've been able to achieve really high cure rates in some types of pediatric cancer. And that's let us focus our attention on scaling back therapy and really um, focusing on adverse consequences of some of the treatments of, of, that we administer for the children. Um, I think that was the biggest, the biggest thing. Do you, what, what do you hope to see in the future? Well, we all hope to see uh, cancer eliminated. Absolutely. You know, we hope that, uh, Absolutely. that we'll be able to identify molecular triggers that cause cancers to develop or cause cells to grow in an unchecked and unregulated way. And that, uh, you know, I think our dream is that we'd be able to attack it on a molecular level and not 
not have to do any kind of uh, surgery or uh, treatment other than alter the, uh, the molecular environment that allows the cancer to grow in a way that would select out only the cancer cells and not harm the individual normal cells. Dr. Middlesbrough, do you think that there's a, a more of a focus on adults with cancer than there are with children? Um, I would say yes and no. I think there's a more of a focus on adult medicine than on, on children's health in, in general, just in the population. I think, uh, by and large, children are healthier than adults, and uh, so maybe appropriately, uh, most of our resources have to go towards taking care of adults. Um, I think that um, in a lot of ways, uh, the children's cancer world has been more organized and more structured. So virtually every child with cancer in the United States is enrolled in a trial or their treatment is tracked and protocol driven. And so that allows for a lot less individual variation and allows us to learn uh, and compare things side by side in a way that you can't if the treatment is administered in a more ad hoc way. So in some ways I think uh, treatment of pediatric cancer serves as a model for cancer care um, over maybe what's done in adults. Interesting. My final question for you, Dr. Middlesworth, is what is the most rewarding part of your job? Um, I think probably there's, it's a tough question to answer because there's so many incredible rewards in our profession um, in helping people get better in allaying the tremendous anxiety that the parents of a sick child have. Um, but I think that, um, that some of the most rewarding aspects have been uh, through working with my colleagues that in the past um, several years we've really focused on trying to harness the incredible talent we have at Columbia, maybe that exists in somewhat of a siloed way, and trying to develop institutional infrastructure and uh, working patterns that allow people who have similar interests and complementary areas of expertise to work together because that really um, really drives the impact of what we do and has a profound effect for our patients. I think when we can bring together all the amazing um, amazing talent and the amazing brain power that, that exists at an institution like this. And I think that programmatic development is really um, very rewarding. Sir, thank you so much. Thanks a lot, This is great. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed speaking with you. Thank you. Thanks.